that even when it's a little hot in this place, it doesn't stop any of you from praising God. We'll just praise Him a little bit more, right? I'm so thankful for what God is doing. Why don't we just give Him a clap offering of praise? I'm going to ask that we would all stand to our feet as we prepare ourselves for the Word of God. God has been so good to us. He has been so good to us. And I'm so encouraged when I see the saints of Morningstar come with joy and smiles on their faces and a song on their lips. It, it touches my soul, and I'm so thankful for what God is doing. Tonight, we had a little change of plans, and uh, I just felt led to, to ask somebody else to preach tonight. We... Um, You know, when you're following after the Spirit, God changes the program. And sometimes your plans, He mixes them up a little bit. And uh, I'm so thankful that even though sometimes we can have things programmed and we could have things worked out and sketched out, that when God just breathes on a service and tells us to go a different direction, I'm so thankful that we just follow the leading of the Holy Ghost. Amen. I truly believe that we are in revival and that we're pushing for an evangelistic thrust. And today I got a phone call earlier from a good friend of mine who was pastoring in Casa Grande and has been pre preaching around and God has done some great things in his life. And he says, you know what, I just want to come and have church with you all tonight. And you know what, there are very few men of God, people that preach the word that just go and sit and worship and praise with the people of God. And you know what? That speaks volumes of his character. But tonight, Brother Freddie Hidalgo is here. And uh, we're just going to invite him to this pulpit. I know God has given him a testimony and a word for this evening. So why don't we thank the Lord for Pastor Freddie Hidalgo as he comes to give a word to Morningstar. Why don't we magnify him? Why don't we thank the Lord for what he's about to do? Come on, Brother Freddie. Come and preach the word, my brother. How many can say praise the Lord? How about doing it louder than that and say praise the Lord? He is worthy of all the glory and all the praise. What a wonderful honor and privilege. You know, when God does something different and moves at that moment, it's very important you do what the Lord has, to, has for you to do. And I, I honestly just came here to worship the Lord with my wonderful family. Priscilla, why don't you wave your hand? That's my beautiful wife, Priscilla Hidalgo. My six-year-old son, Jeremiah Hidalgo. Most of you know about his miracle testimony, being healed of an eight-centimeter brain tumor. The miracle child is in the house tonight. Thank God for that. And my beautiful baby girls, Hadassah and Abigail. They're, they're too small to stand up, but they're right there. Hi, Abigail. There she is right there, waving her hand. It's an honor to be in the house of God. And have you ever had one of those moments in your life where it's very easy to just be thankful and bless the Lord? I mean, like, no one has to encourage you. No one has to push you. But you just get in the car and you put the radio on and your music, your worship music is playing. And it's so easy to praise the Lord. Have you ever had those moments where you told yourself, I must be thankful in this, but you just could not feel it. I feel tonight that there are those of you in this house, maybe you, you, you've heard so much great preaching, you've seen the worship, heard testimonies, but you yourself stand there and say, I'm trying to be thankful, and I'm trying to just cry tears, but I'm so focused on my problem. I heard the Lord speak to me as Pastor Jason comes up and asks me to speak that there's going to be a sort of an alabaster box breaking moment of joy. You're not going to have to try to be happy tonight. It's going to be released in this service tonight. You're going to go home whether you like it or not with the weight lifted off in joy unspeakable and full of glory in this house tonight. Let's lift our hands and bless the Lord. We love you, Jesus. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. We magnify you in the name of Jesus. 
since you're already standing, let's go into the Second Corinthians chapter five and verse seventeen. Give honor to Pastor Jason Lizaraga, if I pronounced it correctly, and Bishop Lizaraga, wonderful men of God, wonderful men of God. I remember um, about ten and a half years ago, my first time receiving the Holy Ghost and being baptized in Jesus' name. Before that, I was an atheist, full of devils, on meth, you know. The only voice in my life was Tupac, Machiavelli, Thug Life. Some of you and old school people know what I'm talking about. You know, and I remember the, the power of God coming in, and I'll speak a little bit about that tonight, but the transformation that took place. This is one of the first churches that I would go and visit. You know when you're a new convert, Sunday's not just good enough? You know, like when you're a new convert, like Tuesday prayer, you're like, where's everybody at? There's like five people. <laughs> and you go off looking for other churches that are on fire having church. Well, this is the church. Yeah. Hey, all I knew on Friday night was going down the boulevard, Club Rio, drop it like it's hot. It's getting hot in here, so take, you know how it goes. <laughs> I ain't trying to make some of you back backslide tonight. But that's what I did on Friday night. And where else am I to go but the house of the Lord? You ought to be thankful they're having church on Friday night. Some of you might be out there clubbing it, dropping it, flipping it and bouncing it. But I come to lift up the name of Jesus. I come to magnify God with all my strength, with all my might, with all my heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17. The very first scripture I memorized in my new conversion, 2003, January 3rd. You ought to know your baptism day and the day you got the Holy Ghost. It's more important than your natural birthday. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature or creation. All things are passed away. Behold... All things. Somebody say all things. all things. All things are become new. Does somebody have that experience? When you met the Lord Jesus Christ, you didn't have to try to be a Christian. His touch on your life just kind of made you just like look back at yourself. Everything I knew became old. Like these, these shoes don't fit me no more, dude. Th this weed pipe is not cutting it no more. This, this blunt I'm smoking on is not getting me high enough. What I felt in the house of God has consumed me. Everything's passed away. And all I'm beholding is everything new. Woo! There's some new converts in this house. You're going to be encouraged tonight. One more scripture. Revelations chapter 12 and verse 11. Revelations 12 and verse 11. And they overcame him. Speaking of the enemy, the devil. The people of God overcame him by the blood of the lamb. And by the word, word of their testimony. Someone say word of their testimony. And they didn't just overcome the him with their testimony. They loved not their own lives unto death that means i who i was before christ don't even exist no more i'm pursuing god even to death because there ain't nothing else to live for but god what a wonderful experience you and i have tonight and privilege and honor to be serving god in 2013 go ahead and put your bibles down let's go ahead and throw our hands up and one more time pray for me i'll pray for you let's ask god to have his way father in the name of jesus i'm asking god that you would anoint my lips god i am a mere man and i'd ask that you move me out of the way god and consume me flood my mind and my memory and my heart with your word with your passion with your desire for lost souls and those in need of that, that need you lord strength healing let it be released tonight, I pray, in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's clap our hands before we're seated. Let's honor the Lord and bless Him with a shout of praise. Pueblos, todos, pati las manos, aclamar a Dios con voz de jubilo. 
Clap your hands, all ye people, shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you for standing to the honor of the word of God. You may be seated tonight. God bless every one of you. Praise the Lord. You know, it's no coincidence when God does something in your life. When Pastor Lizaraga, Brother Jason, came up to me and asked me to speak, it was, it was just, it lined up with what was going on in my mind and my heart. And the Lord took me through something yesterday, and I did not understand fully that it would be for the reason of tonight. But let me just draw a little five-minute scenario what happened to me yesterday. Yesterday, my wife had to take care of some errands. Before I go into the Word, let me just tell you a small story. She had to take care of some errands. She took our children with her, and I had to go to work in the morning. And if you know what I do, I work in a warehouse with a lot of men, and we order select heavy boxes in a very, very tight, humid place, very hot. Just walking in there, you're going to sweat. Well, imagine yourself lifting boxes at, like, at a rapid pace, like you're really, really moving, and you're, everything you're wearing is drenched in sweat for hours upon hours. And I don't complain. I bless God for it. But my wife took the car, the only vehicle that we have at the moment, and she had dropped me off at work. And this guy, and this is just a new job that I'm working at right now, and I asked this guy, I said, hey, bro, would you mind giving me a ride home after work? He looks at me and says, yeah, no problem. You actually live right by me. I said, hey, man, that's good, because if I had to walk, it'd be 12 miles, and it's hot outside, and I'm full of sweat, and it looks like there's a storm coming our way. All right. So after this whole work shift is over and I'm getting close to done and people are walking out because we're finished, but I'm still working. I look and I see the individual who said he'd give me a ride walking out the door. And I said, Lord, I hope he's going out to go smoke a cigarette or go out there and talk to his buddies or something. Don't let him get out of this parking lot. I need a ride. <laughs> well, I finished up and everything and I ran out there. His car is gone. Nobody was out there. And I said, well, maybe I can call somebody, and my phone was dead. And I said, okay, okay. And all, I felt this, 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 you know, ugliness come out of me. You know, the flesh. She's like, <laughs> I'm mad, and I'm mad at the world. And I said, no, you're not. You're, you know, you're a Christian still, dude. Kick back. <laughs> I, talk, I might only want to talk to myself out there. I'm walking down the sidewalk, and I'm walking, and I'm walking, and I'm like, wow, I just barely hit Kyrene after like 15 minutes, and Kyrene is like way far from Alma School. So I was like walking and walking and walking, and I'm like, Lord, my feet already hurt, man. When I clocked out, my feet were aching, and I was like, well, you know, and then all of a sudden, this monsoon comes. And for like 15 agonizing minutes, dirt just hitting me in the face, and I'm just walking against it. I wasn't looking for cover. I wasn't looking to hide in one of them things where you wait for the bus. I was just like, bring it on. God, if you wanted to rain dirt on me, I'm going to take it. If, you're, you know, if I did something bad, then bring it on. I had a bad attitude. I'm going somewhere with this. And then to wash off all this dirt, after a monsoon comes the rain. <laughs> I'm over here like, okay. And on my way home, I look to my right, and there are people that are like literally digging in the trash can because they're looking for food. They're homeless people. And I look in the alley behind them, and I see people that are in the alley trying to take cover from the rain with trash or plastic, um, like Safeway Food City bags, which has their life possessions inside. They don't have a house to put their stuff. It's plastic bags. So when I seen this, I said, Lord, oh, and it hit me. I said, Lord, I'm complaining, I'm ungrateful, I'm unthankful, and I'm so focused on what's going wrong right now. I don't see what is going on in my life good. And I said, I guess I didn't have a bad day. 
And when I got home, I began to pray, and the Lord's been dealing with me. And he said, it's not just you, but many of my people are focusing on all the torments and struggles of life and everything that comes against them through family or relationships or relatives or church problems. And they're looking and they're focusing so much on this that they can't see what I'm doing behind the scenes. They don't see the miraculous that I'm organizing and constructing in their life. They're focused on problems. And that's where many of us are in life at times. And I said all that to say this. We have to remember what God has done in our life. Sometimes right now you're looking at how bad it is, but stop. Put the brakes on and look back and say, Lord, I remember when you came and spoke a fresh word in my life. Why am I acting like my past in my life is some museum where God used to speak to me, but now I'm living life and I'm doing great things for God. And now I don't even feel or see or comprehend that he can speak to me. I'm here to encourage you. Morning Star Church tonight, God here can speak to you. He can encourage you if you would just stop Focusing on problems and troubles and hear his voice. As I went home, I began to focus and contemplate and think about the things God has brought me out of. You know, I was actually in a place where I'm like, God, help me to focus and see your glory and not my problems. I know I'm not the only one who goes through this. I love it when it's just like a splash over of joy and thankfulness. But sometimes we got to get on our knees and take this flesh, this carcass and crucify it and say, God, help me to perceive what you're doing in my life and push the negative out the way so I can live joy. How am I supposed to share the word of God and witness my testimony if I'm so focused on what's going wrong? So then I'm taken back to 2003, January 3rd. This day, this day here was around a season in my life where I was very, very deeply contemplating suicide. 21 years, actually I was 20, barely turning 21 years old. I just gotten out of prison I was in there for a very, very short time at the Florence um, jail prison thing. They had me there for possession of marijuana. I'm not ashamed to tell you where God brought me from. You know, smoking on dope. Got arrested in Mesa trying to find my way back home. The cop pulled me over, rolls the windows down. This cloud just comes out. He says, you been smoking, sir? I said, no, I haven't. He says, what's in your teeth? You been eating oregano? I tried to hide the stuff. I tried to eat it. I tried to eat it. You're not going to catch me with this dope. And I can remember. You know, it's a funny story. Let me tell you this. The place that I was pulled over. Check it out. I'm like, because I, tr- I was in Mesa trying to drive back to Casa Grande. And I was so high. I didn't know where I was. I just knew that if I take a shortcut, there's a reservation. Sacatone. <laughs> and, and he goes, he, he, there's a chopper on me and there's like four cop cars. I'm like, dude, that didn't kill nobody. And then it turns out that the place he pulled me over to was the DPS station, the, the highway patrol station. Pull me over. I made a ride and said, okay, sir. And there's a big old gate and I'm in the desert and there's a highway patrol. I'm like, there's all kinds. Oh, man. I drove right to the cop base high. (laughs) Truth. And I can remember, you know, them cuffing me to the car. And, you know, they told us, sir, we're going to call a tow truck and take away your car. And I was like, my mom's going to kill me. My, my, my mom's name. I can't, I can't lie about that. I'm lying about everything else, but I can't lie about that. She's going to find out, man. I'm in trouble. I cause shame to my family. I have shamed myself and my family, I told myself. And I walked into that, that um, highway patrol office, and they put me on cuffs, and they sat me there, and he said, Sir, can I ask you some questions? And he said, You're 20. You're 21 years old. You live with your mom still. You got a good job, you're a supervisor at Walmart, and you got your whole life ahead of you, man, and 
Here you are driving by yourself in the middle of the desert and you're so high you don't even know you're driving into a station and you have all this marijuana on you and here I am. I have the ability to take you up North Phoenix and put you in jail where you can be locked up for years. I mean, for real. I can, I can do that to you right now. But a- answer me this. Why are you doing this to yourself? And I'll never forget it. I never will. I sat there with my insane clown posse shirt on. (laughs) I was into the ICP, down with the clown. You have to go, don't even Google that by the way, just leave it alone. (laughs) He said, sir, why are you doing this to yourself? You say you got a girlfriend, you're, why are you doing, I look at you, you're destroying your life. And I put my head down and I said, I, I don't know. I really didn't know. I had no answer. And he goes, sir, young man, I don't feel to take you back up North Phoenix. I don't know why, but I'm going to let you go. And he said, I don't know why, but, you know, call your friends up that you were getting high with and tell them to pick up at a gas station. I don't do this, but I'm going to do it tonight. I'm going to drop you up at the gas station somewhere in that area, and you go ahead and go. You're still going to have to pay a fine. You still got to go to your, your drug task program, but I'm going to let you go tonight, and we're going we're gonna to go ahead, and you're not going to get hammered the way I was going to hammer you. It's a waste of my hour driving North Phoenix, and you, you need help. And I was like, whoa. Whoa, he let me go. I was facing years. Man, oh my goodness. Went to my friend's house. I went back to smoking. And it was that week, that week tremendously, I was like feeling there was something happening. I, I was trying to destroy myself. I was, I shamed my mom. I shamed my family. What else is there for me? I might as well just end it, man. There's no reason for me to live. Everybody saw my name in the paper. I have no, rep- I didn't have a reputation to begin with, but whatever I did, I'm just a stoner loser good for nothing, I might as well just end it. And that week, I actually called a friend of mine, and he had a lot of guns. He's like a hunter kind of guy. Now I told him I want to go hunting. Let me borrow a gun. Had this gun and contemplated in my mind, I'm going to drive to Casa Grand Mountain And I'm going to take my life. Now, you got to understand, from the age of 15, I always fought depression. I always didn't understand it, but I fought thoughts of suicide. I was addicted to meth at 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Cocaine was just like the way people smoke cigarettes. Man, I always got rocks in my pocket. You know, smoking on hydroponics and bombing fluid that they put into dead bodies. So before funerals, smoking on that. Call it Sherm. I mean, I don't even know how I can speak to you right now with what I'm speaking to you because my brain should be so fried. Have you ever seen that man who carries the world in his back statue? Well, imagine that size ball of rock of coke and meth. I must have snorted that up my nostrils, that size. It's a wonder how God saved my life. And in this time of contemplating suicide, right before I left my house, this is no joke, my friend, good friend of mine at the time, his... His name is Daniel. He called me and he invited me to a Christmas drama that his sister was going to be in. His little sister was in a drama and we were going to, you know, smoke some weed, but he had to attend that first. We were weed partners, weed smokers. And I went there and he didn't show up. He got pulled over. Well, check this out. I'm looking for him and I walk into the apostolic tabernacle of Casa Grande, Pastor Combs Church. And I'm looking for this guy like... Man, you know, I got plans today. I ain't trying to mess with all this stuff. I'm not trying to go, come fill, you know, church. I, I, don't, I was an atheist. If you search my background as a young child, I was brought up. What's this? Praise God. <laughs> I must be sweating. But I was an atheist. I was an atheist, and if you search my background long enough, you see me at the age of six and seven doing tarot cards with my grandma, you know? It's one of those kind of kids, you know? (laughs) Read your future. (laughs) I don't know, maybe not your family, but my family is all about it. And I had that kind of background. And here I am in church, and all these sweet apostolic women of God come to me, and the first thing that happened to me was I was, the Holy Ghost put me in check. Like, I walked in that church, and I was like, I thought I was the bomb and everything, like, man, don't... I run the world, I run the show, don't know me. I walked in and I was like, whoa, these women are just different. (laughs) 
I was afraid. Like the fear of the Lord and the reverence that our women carry in their representation serving the Lord, it put me in check. It put me in check. It's so good to know that the church and the house God, the house God has for us is not a place where you can lust after women because our women are so godly. I was like, okay, I put my head down. I was nodding like this to everybody. It's nice to be here. I was stoned out of my head. And I don't even know how or why I sat down. And the woman says, oh, son, you know those old grandmas in church? Oh, dear, come over here. I got a seat right over for you. I'm like, I, I was just being led. I couldn't even fight it. I was like, okay. <laughs> And I sat down, and like I remember I smelled like weed so much, I was like, dude, I didn't put no cologne on. I was like, oh, dude, it's over. And all these kids came and sat around me, and I'm like, what's going on? I found out later, that's where, that's the children's section. <laughs> I'm like, oh my goodness, these kids probably smell me. And they're like, what's your name? And I'm like, Freddie. And I'm supposed to be a thug, you know? want some of this? I'm mad at the world. I'll take you out, man. Nothing to live for. Nothing to lose. And here I am, surrounded by children. God knew what he was doing. He orchestrated children in my path to bring my, my pride down to humility. Have you ever had God bring you down to a place where you had to be broken of pride to understand his ways? That was my time. I said, okay. And all of a sudden, I look forward. And there's this broken family on the Christmas drama. It was Christmas Eve when I was going to end my life. And I'm sitting here watching this family fighting. And, and the, the father's on the stage drinking a 40, watching the television. And the son comes home. Dad, can we go play ball? Dad, can, we, can you take me out to play ball? He has his glove on and everything. And dad's like, get out of the way. Can't you see him watching the game? And he gets his 40 and starts drinking it. And I was like, what kind of play is this, man, in church? <laughs> if I wanted to see my life, I just got to close my eyes, buddy. <laughs> Supposed to help me? Remind me of my life, why don't you? I'm trying to run from it. And then, and then the, another kid comes up. Hey, Dad, you know, look what I did in school. Look at my homework. God, get out of here. Go play with your toys drinking his 40 and I just began so angry watching that because I saw generations of my family on all sides in this drama and then the phone rings and the mom's over here cooking and she's over here hello hi doctor and she starts you know talking to the doctor and all of a sudden her face drops and she hangs up the phone and she goes to her husband who was it honey it was doctor what do you say that I have cancer and I'm dying and I have five weeks to live what are we gonna do what are we gonna do and he looks up and says well, I don't know. And he was just drunk. I don't know. And then he drinks his 40. And then the scene changes. And you know how they sing songs between dramas. And I sat there and I said, man, this is just gut-wrenching to watch. This is just horrible to watch. And during the whole entire drama, there was a five-year-old daughter who was mute. And she just sat there and watched all the scenes. And no one talked to her. And she didn't talk to nobody. She never spoken one word in her life. Anyways, at the end of this drama, the dad's yelling at the mom. The mom is yelling at the dad. Why are you yelling at her son? Well, he got arrested because he's doing this. Well, look at your life. You're an alcohol. Da, 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 da. Yelling at each other. Yelling at each other. And I sat there with tears just shaking shaking in my eyes as I was watching this and this little girl who never spoke a word she goes Jesus and when she said that name in this play I sat there and tears just forced themselves down my cheek and she goes Jesus is the answer with the Bible in her hand and the father goes have we been so blind the answer has been here this whole time and boom, the lights went on. You know how the dramas are. Poof, lights go on. Preacher comes out. Hey, sir. Hey, sinner friend. You know, if you don't have God in your life, you need God tonight. Well, I was just sitting there like, oh, my goodness. <laughs> like, I'm, a, I'm from a Catholic background now, you know? The only church I did go when it was Easter, Christmas, or someone getting married or someone dying was just like, you know, just sitting here making dirty jokes to my cousins and, <laughs> you know, standing up, sit down, stand up, sit down. I didn't understand God. But when the preacher gets up and there's a young man in here tonight, you've been contemplating suicide. I'm like, what? 
There's a young man tonight. You've been doing all these drugs and you've been sleeping with all these girls, but you've still not found joy. And I sat there and said, this guy don't even know me. And then I'm like, maybe he's a psychologist. But then he said, the Bible says, and boom, 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 shotgun Bible scriptures. And I said, dude, even that Bible knows me. <laughs> even the scriptures are discerning this guy. And I'm like, my hands are sweating. I'm serious. I was like this. Man, what's going on? I was looking at the exit door. Like, how long does it take, man? I got to get out of here, you know? And then, and then the altar call comes. Oh, son, why don't you come pray? Come on, go pray. Oh, I'm okay, I'm okay. No, it's okay. People lay hands on me. Oh, no, I'm okay, man. I'm all right, you know? <laughs> you know? And somehow or another, here I am on my knees. Boom, boom, boom. And I'm like, okay, I'm all, I'm breathing hard, and I'm like, and I'm crying. I'm like, I don't want people to see me cry. I put my face in the carpet, and I go like this, try to hide my head. <laughs> and all of a sudden, a man of God, a great man of God, his name is Ron Garrett, Pastor Garrett, comes up and lays hands on my head. He says, son, you've come here, and the devil's got a hold of your life tonight. That's a strong thing to be told from a preacher, Right? But I needed to hear that. I didn't need him to patty cake me and tell him just to confess the Lord is my personal Savior. I didn't just need him to say just to believe in my heart and it's all going to be well. Son, you have a devil in your life right now. I'm going to speak some words and I want you to be silent. I'm not speaking to you. I'm speaking to that devil that's got a hold of your life. And I knew he was telling the truth because I was like com in commotions. I was in a ball. Like, come, why would you just be in a ball? And I was over here like, oh, I'm on my side like this, and my leg's kicking by itself. You know, I'm, for those of you who can't see over there, my leg's like this. And I, I'm wrestling, and, and I don't remember too much at this moment, but I remember the voice of br Brother Ron Garrett. Devil, I command you now to let go of this young man's life. He does not belong to you. And he began to quote scriptures. As he began to quote these scriptures, out of the pits of my belly was like this. Ugh! Like the only thing I can imagine was when I used to get real drunk with tequila and you get that. Ugh! You know, like it was nasty. I remember it like it, and I was like just all my muscles in my body were really tight like this. Ugh! And I was just like. Ugh! And, and people started stepping away. The ones that were really were prayed up stepped away. And the rest came in there and, you know, took, took force. It was a crazy experience. I remember falling on my ground, on the ground. And, and people afterwards told me that I slithered like a snake. And I didn't understand what I was dealing with, with the music I was listening to. I was so into this hip hop and, and all this just suicidal music and you know, drug and gang and violence and murder music, it possessed me. Looking back, I understand what possessed me. It was that and that black magic I was messing with. But I'll never forget this. I, I was on my knees and someone shouted out, lift up your head to God. Don't show the devil you're a coward. And I sat there and was like, man, I know coward. I could do anything. But when I tried to do this, it was hard. I'm on my knees and I have my head down and I have my hands balled up. Someone said, lift your hands. And I was like, oh, no. I remember, I remember what it felt. It was like, oh, I forced them up. And in my mind, it was like, look at you, you little sissy with your hands up. You know, you, you're gay. That's what the first thing I heard. You're, you're gay with your hands like this. <laughs> that was what I heard. And I was like, I don't care because I, even though I was possessed, even though I was possessed, I still couldn't stop crying and I felt the love of God drawing me. I was in between struggling. And when I opened my hands, this is, this, this, God is my witness before all you wonderful people and those of you on internet land. I opened my eyes, my hands, and I opened my eyes. And the brightest light you can ever imagine. I mean like, you know how right now I can see both uh, Bishop and Pastor Lizarraga and the rest of the men. And I'm looking that way, my peripheral. Everything was, I was blinded by the brightest light as I opened my eyes. 
And I know you hear a lot of stories and everything, but this is mine. This is mine. You got yours, and I want to hear it too, but this is mine. Nobody can tell this like me. I'm on my knees, I and I open my, once I opened my hands like this, I said, Jesus, I need you. And now my body was all tensed up. My chest, my abs, my arm, my shoulders, my legs, my back, my neck. I was like in a physical stiffness, man. And when I said, Jesus, I need you. My, all my muscles, it was like if they were just on Prozac instantly. I fell to the ground. And I couldn't even lift my hand. I mean, I couldn't even lift my head. I was like, ha, 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 ha. And then I started laughing, like, uncontrollably, like, ha, 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 ha. And the people were like, yeah, yeah. And then someone's like, woo. And then other people were like, woo. And then the whole church takes off running. And I'm like, I don't know what I did, but it must have been good. I didn't get the Holy Ghost at that moment, but Satan left me when I called on the name of Jesus. Satan let go of me when I cried out to Jesus. Somebody right now shout that name, Jesus. the name of Jesus. If you're possessed of devils tonight, God can set you free. If you need direction tonight, God can give you divine direction. Your purpose, your destiny, right now, in this house of God, tonight. There's a power of God that's in this house. Some of you don't understand it. Go ahead and lift your hands. Close your eyes. Don't worry about me, your neighbors. Right now, there's an anointing falling down in this house. There's an anointing. You're going to go home with healing. You're going to go home with your true salvation. You're going to go home with a walk with God. Hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. You may be seated for a moment. And this was amazing. After I get up full of sweat, like I prayed hard, man. Like I'm sweating now. I'm kind of one of those, they say I'm really hyperactive, you know. If I do something, it's like, with all my might. <laughs> well, it's the kind of guy I am, man. I was a meth addict. What do you expect? I'm going to go halfway. I'm going to go all the way. You know, if I'm going to go to hell, I'm going to jump in it. I'm not going to be like riding the fence, you know, surfing some waves. No, man. You're either in church or you're out of church. You either love God or you don't love God. You either want to go to heaven or you want to go to hell. You don't want the Holy Ghost, you're going to speak with tongues. Or you don't want the Holy Ghost, you're not going to speak with tongues. You're either going to live this life and look and act like a Christian. Or you're going to not live this life and not look and act like a Christian. I want it on the outside as well, on the inside. I want people to know that Jesus lives. I want people to know that they can have an experience too. Hallelujah. Praise God. They took me to the waters that night. They baptized me. I didn't need a Bible study. <laughs> you didn't have to take me to search, search for truth. <laughs> you didn't have to give me exploring God's word. You didn't even have to give that little pamphlet a place prepared for you. <laughs> I'm curious. Pastor Combs come up to me. He's like, okay, Brother Freddie, you've asked God to forgive you, right? I said, yeah, I have. He's like, when you've asked God to forgive you, and, and you know, I'm so carnal, he had to talk to me like this. He's like, you know when you wash clothes? <laughs> I'm like, yeah. He goes, well, when you got a stain in your shirt, what do you do? Uh, you put soap in it? Well, when you ask God to forgive you, that, that name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, he shed, came down, and it's like, you know, it's mixing with all that garbage in your life, and God's forgiven you, right? I'm like, I feel forgiven, yeah. He's like, well, what do you do when you take soap, put it in a dirty shirt? You got to put it in water. 
I said, oh, yeah, of course. You've got to wash away all that dirt. He's like, well, exactly. You've already asked God to forgive you, but the stain of sin is still on your life until you're baptized in submersion in water in the name of Jesus Christ. Bing! Bing! I believed it. I understood it. I was baptized in Jesus' name. I came up like... Is this for real? Like, I got arrested. It's washed away. I committed adultery. It's washed away. You mean like, I was molested and I'm wounded still. God's washing that away? That's why I dance. That's why I shout. That's why I'm on fire for God. Yes! And God filled me with the Holy Ghost. And get this. It wasn't on some big crusade night. It was only three days later at a Bible study. They broke out that organ and they started singing. And I lifted my hands and tears came down. And I was like... I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you. I know how to pray. Oh, Lord Jesus, I come before you and I'm asking God that you just anoint me, God, and just touch. No, I don't know how to do all that stuff yet. I was like, I love you, Jesus. 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 And before you know, I'm like, oh, I'm speaking in tongues. And I'm like, and then I'm like, oh, and I was just like speaking in tongues. Put it this way. My wife wasn't my wife that time. She just had a crush on me because I was the new guy in church. She's like, man, I hope that guy gets all the way to church. <laughs> Lord, help that young man. I got so drunk in the Holy Ghost speaking with tongues. I mean, like I was on the ground and I was speaking in tongues during song service. And song service. And everybody went wild. I remember I felt the wind. Because everybody was running the aisles. You know how that is. And I was just speaking in tongues, speaking in tongues. And, and check it out. All of a sudden, Sister Elder Combs, she, she, she raised me in the Lord. She passed away just a few years ago. Kicks me in the side. Brother Freddy? Brother Freddy, Sonny? I opened my eyes. I, I got to lock up the church, dear. I mean, I didn't even know if they preached or not. I just sat there and there I was singing um, uh, one of those songs. We, we are standing on holy ground. I was, boom, it dropped me. It woke me up and my wife had to take my car, someone else had to drive their car and maneuver us to, the, to my house because I wasn't supposed to be alone with no, somebody, you know how it is? Young men are not alone with young women. One of the elders took me home and she drove my car and I got out of the car and I was like, they pulled my car and they parked and I was like, God bless you guys, thank you guys. I walked in my house, I got the keys and I was like, I need more of this. I went to my bedroom and I was like, Fell on my knees, I put my hands like this, and I started speaking in tongues like four in the morning. Like addicted to speaking in tongues because I became one with the Almighty God who knew my name. He knew my name. And since that day, it's been 10 years, can I tell you, God has given me things that I don't even deserve. I have a beautiful wife who I love dearly. God has given me three beautiful children, people in my life to speak to me, to let me know that he loves me. You're a blessed church tonight. Right now, remember where God brought you from. Remember the torment of the enemy. Remember the struggles and bondage you went through, addictions to drugs. People molested you and wounded you as a child, but then God healed you. Remember the glorious power of God because it's in this house tonight. Let's all stand tonight. Let's all stand tonight. I believe that by the spoken word of God, by the spoken word of faith, 
that not only can you be in the midst of this healing, and many of you here tonight, if you're visitors or maybe you've been coming just for a few weeks, you're feeling everything in this house right now. It's just all over you. Don't just feel something and experience what you feel and then step out of that and walk backwards. Remember, be, be backwards, all things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Is there somebody in this house you want to go forward? You know, I'm, I'm serious. You're tired of going back. You're tired of being like walking in circles. 40 years walking in circles. You want to go forward. God is going to release a supernatural power right now, tonight. Right where you stand tonight. Traditionally, I know like a lot of women come here and the men come up here. But right where you stand. I want you to believe with me that God can give you a renewing of your mind, break you out of your carnal thinking, and enter a glory realm you've never even been before. Don't think right now I have to go to work tomorrow. Don't think where I'm going to eat after church. Act like if you're a brand new sinner in the pew and you need that touch that you had years ago, but I want a fresh touch. I want to go to the next level. Let's lift our hands right now. And let's ask God, let's all do a prayer of repentance and ask God to search our heart. Before we go into singing, before we go any further, let's ask God to forgive us. Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sin. God, forgive me for my, my lack of faith in you and in your word. Oh God, forgive me, Lord, if I have not trusted in you. Help me, God. Draw me back to that place you've called me to be. Draw me back to that place where I can just feel your presence and cry tears as you wash my soul. Lord Jesus, forgive me my sin for missing the mark and going weeks without answering your call. Some of you tonight, God has called you to do great ministry. But because you're looking so much at the things going wrong, you ain't even seen the great wonders God has for you. There's some of you tonight, God's been dealing with you about starting life groups in your house, using your own house, ordering pizza and inviting the neighborhood to your house and watching them get the Holy Ghost, not necessarily only in church, but in your home. Ministries are in this house. To the young people, you're thinking God's going to call you whenever you reach a certain age. Young ladies, you think whenever I get married, then I'm going to do something. God says, I want to do it right now. But it's not going to happen when we're looking backwards. We've got to press towards the mark of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. So this is what we're going to do. Many of you are familiar with Bishop Arcovio. He speaks the word of faith. He's a good friend of mine. He, he, he's mentored me and trained me. The power of God's in this house, nothing to do with me. God flows through people. But whenever we speak the word of faith, for example, when we went to India, the people that were so hungry for God, there was not enough of us to go lay hands on everybody for them to get the Holy Ghost. When you read the book of Acts and continue, first they start off laying hands, then they end up speaking and it falls on them. It falls on them. Tonight, that's going to happen. And in India, everybody likes to shout praise to God because we're so thankful for what He's done in our life. We're so thankful that He would even mind me to forgive me of all my iniquity and sin and bring me into transformation to know Him. What an honor, honor and privilege. But we shouted in India. We said, Ha! Le! Lou. And when we got to Yah, we exalted Yah. With all of our might and strength, the name of the Lord. And it broke sound waves in the house. Principalities and powers that were working with families trying to cause problems vanished. And then God had that intimate moment with individuals in the house. Now that you, you've asked the Lord to forgive you, and I have myself, and we know that we're in His presence, I wonder right now if we want to give God the highest praise tonight and allow Him to take us into destiny with your testimony. Your testimony is so great. If you would just even share a little bit with your coworker, you would not know behind the scenes they're over here cutting on cocaine, making lines to snort. 
because they're empty and you have it all but the testimony is locked in how many want to be used by God this is what we're going to do we're going to lift our voice and we're going to cry out to God and we're going to give God the highest praise we're going to shout ha le lu and when we get to y'all let's just exalt as loud as we can and once that's finished don't stop and look to your neighbor. Enter that moment of intimacy with him. Seek after his face. Speak with tongues. Cry out to God. Pray with your neighbor. Pray with your friend. Are you ready, church? Are you ready? By the power of the word of God and by the authority that's in the name of Jesus, I command you now to receive your healing, deliverance, and breakthrough and walk in destiny as God has called you. All together now with loud voices. Hallelujah! Breakthrough happening right now. Deliverance is happening right where you stand. Cancer is being annihilated right where you stand. Tumors are dissolving. Marriages are coming back together. Your teenagers are going to serve God. Your children are going to live for God. That back injury is healed. That sinus infection is gone. My backslidden wife is going to come back. My backslidden husband is going to come back. Oh, Somebody rejoice now. It's already done. Let's go ahead and bless the name of God. Let's go home with my healing. Let's go home with my victory, with my testimony. I've overcome the devil by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of my testimony. I am a child of God. Someone needs to praise the Lord. We just need to praise God. Some of you used to dance with the world. We need to dance for Jesus. You used to get drunk, drunk at the clubs, drunk at the bars. I'm getting drunk in the house of God on that new wine that comes from heaven. Yes. He's the Lord of a breakthrough. He's the Lord of a breakthrough. We worship you. We worship you. Yes. I wonder if I could have all the teenagers, all the teenagers from the age of 13 to 19, come up to the front right now. If you're in this house, a 13 to 19, we're not going to sit here and fall and cry. We're going to worship God. Generation, you are the next generation. Let them all come. I feel the Holy Ghost right now. You are the future church. You have endured such pain. Some of you have endured things in your childhood that you've seen at home that you won't even discuss to any other individual. You wonder, why have I gone through the pain? Why have I been bruised? Why have I suffered so much? Can I tell you tonight? It's because if you did not understand a bruising or some pain on that degree, you would not understand that He is Jehovah Jireh, your provider, Jehovah Nisi. He is your healer. And because of that, there's about 50 young people here, I'm going to imagine. Every one of you at least know 10 young people your age. 
They grow up in homes. They see dad's fist going into mom's face. Mom comes home late and dad's beating on mom. Or, or dad comes home late and mom's like, why you smell like other women? And all you hear is yelling in the room. Can I tell you, that's what your friends are going through? And look at you in the house of God, empowered by the Holy Ghost. 50 times 10, do the math. You want to see revival? It's right here. Encourage your young people. Bring them to church. Young people, this is what we're going to do. Do this with Brother Freddie. The world, they shout at ball games. They shout to gods that have no ears or voices. But Almighty God, Jesus Christ is in this house tonight. I want these young people to worship God. I'm, I'm serious. Don't, don't come hit before Him like you're afraid of Him, like He's going to beat you up. Praise Him. If all you know to do is say, thank you. Let's show out of our members, of our body, our hands, our voices. Let's magnify God. Musicians, let's go ahead and church behind. Let's do the same thing. Let's back up our young people because they're going to be used. Let's worship God. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you. We bless your name. You're going to use this generation. You're going to bless this generation. That's it. He's the Lord of a breakthrough. He's the Lord of a breakthrough. Cry to God. Cry out to God. Let's lay hands on the young people. Let's lay hands on the young people.